but it's time to test out to see if our computer will work within Linux. So we have downloaded Mepis and we have burned an ISO image here onto this CD. So it's about 700 megabytes of data. And what we're going to do now, because this is a bootable CD, is we need to boot this old computer with the CD. And this is really probably the most technically difficult part of the entire conversion process over to Linux. Now what will happen if I just turn this computer on is it will automatically look to the hard drive that Windows is still living in and it will go there and it will boot the computer in Windows, which won't do us any good because we want to test it in Linux. What we need to do is tell the computer to boot off of the CD-ROM drive in order to boot off the bootable disk. Now, sometimes if you just put the disk into the CD-ROM drive, it will automatically look there and boot, but most of the time it won't. So what we have to do is we have to tell the computer to change the order that it looks at the different drives in order to boot. So when I turn it on, at the startup, I'll get an option to hit one of the function or delete keys in order to enter the setup mode. That's what I need to do. I'm going to enter setup by hitting delete. And once I enter setup, this puts me in a utility that allows me to control all sorts of base level functions within the computer. And if I look one, two, three, four tabs over, and I just use the arrow keys to go through because the mouse doesn't work yet, one, two, three, four, I have the boot setup area. Now this will allow me to adjust the boot order on this particular computer. Now we can see here that the first is the floppy disk, the second is actually the CD-ROM. So if I had just put the CD in here, it would have booted from it. But normally it's going to look like this, where you're going to see the hard drive in the number two position. All we have to do to promote or demote any of these different devices is hit the plus or minus key. So if you see your CD-ROM in third or fourth or fifth place, you just hit plus until it's in first or second place because there's no floppy disk in it. Then hit F10 and now the computer will boot looking to the CD-ROM drive first. Now, to be fair, <laughs> in order to save time, I've already installed Mepis, the version of Linux that we're going to run on this computer. But what you're seeing right now is the exact same process that I went through when we put the CD-ROM in. It's just things will happen a little bit faster because it's now living on the hard drive. So you've put your CD-ROM in, you're booting now from the CD-ROM drive, and the first thing that's going to happen is Linux is going to try and install. It's going to figure out exactly what your hardware configuration is. It's going to make sure it has the proper drivers, and it's going to try and boot the computer, set the screen display up, and get everything ready for us to test. Now, in order to simplify things, I did a few other things. I did plug in an Ethernet connection, but I plugged a wired Ethernet connection in. Linux will support wireless internet and all of the other different peripherals that we might want to add later, but at the beginning we want to keep it as simple as possible. So I plugged in an Ethernet connection and I put an old serial mouse and keyboard on the system, which are the simplest. Later on, I'll upgrade and I'll plug in USB keyboard and mouse or even go wireless. It won't matter, but for the first test, I want to make sure that I have as simple a system as possible. Now, when Linux first boots up, I'm going to be brought into a, an area that asks me what user I am. There's going to be usually two users at the start of Linux. And you can see here that I've got Dotto 1. In the case of when I first booted this off CD, it actually said demo. And the password would have been demo in that case. And there's also a root user. The root user is a super user who can kind of make changes to the system. You're going to need that in all Linux installations. And the password by default will be root. I've made my password here Dotto 1 to keep things simple. And that allows me to launch Linux. And now, as you can see, this old Pentium 3 runs Linux just fine. You're going to be pleasantly surprised with how quick your old computer performs when it's running in Linux. Now, let's take a look at the whole Linux environment. This is the Linux desktop here called Simply Mepis, and it runs something called the KDE or the K desktop environment. It's, as far as I can tell, the closest thing to Windows. Now let's walk through it. As I move the mouse around, as I move it over any of the icons, a little menu pops up that tells me exactly what that icon is. If we go over to the far left side and we click on the K menu, that's just like the Windows menu. Look at that. All of our applications are available to us here. And so if you're comfortable in the Windows or in the Mac environment, you're going to very quickly be comfortable in the Linux environment. There's going to be a few cases where you kind of scratch your head for a few seconds, but you'll figure it out. It'll all make sense pretty quickly. Now, the cool thing about Linux being free is all of the different things that they include with the installation here. And all the other applications that we want to download are also free. But this is the basic starter set. Take a look here. There's graphics applications for photo editing and scanning. The internet applications for file transfer. There's Thunderbird for email. There's Firefox. There are multimedia applications for burning CDs and DVDs and playing music files and playing video. 
The office environment includes the full open office, which includes presentation software and spreadsheets and word processors. We'll be looking at that in our next show. And then all of our different system tools and utilities are all available here for us. The Windows metaphor even continues on farther. For example, if we right click our mouse anywhere on the desktop, we get a contact sensitive menu just like in Windows or on the Mac for that matter. If we want to configure our desktop, we we'll want to change the screen resolution, say, click on configure desktop. And as I would expect, within here, looking a little bit different than it does in Windows, but nevertheless, the same commands are here. Go into the display area, and in the display area, we can adjust our monitor resolution. So you can see that very quickly, you're going to become comfortable in the Linux environment. Certainly if you're comfortable in the Windows environment, especially if you've come from the Windows 98 to Windows XP root and you've experienced the older version of Windows, you're not going to have any trouble at all quickly mastering everything that Linux is. So once you've tested Linux on your computer and you say it's working and you're ready to install it, you can go ahead and run the install. There'll be an extra little icon here that'll say install Linux. You double click on that and a wizard will walk you through the process. Now the biggest decision you're going to have to make is whether or not you want to leave a legacy copy of Windows running on the hard drive. Now you can do that, but that means that you need to set up a Windows partition so that Windows can run in one partition and Linux can run in another. And that way you can boot back and forth between one and the other. Now personally, I didn't see any point in keeping Windows on this computer. We've wiped out all of the data that was in the Windows directories a long time ago, so I wanted to do a clean Linux install, which is exactly what I did. It took me in real time about 30 minutes to do. Now when we return, I'm going to show you what life on the internet is like within Linux. Want more information about the items we highlight on the show? Then make sure you drop by our website at dototech.com. You'll find details about the products we cover, episode descriptions, and lots of cool features.